it is impossible to say when George Torbay and Carla Grant first decided to murder Carla's husband, Robert. Robert was nearly twice as old as Carla, and he married her 10 years before George Torbay came into her life. For nine of those years, Carla was bored with her husband, though he did not seem to notice this. He was more interested in his books and the gold which he bought. George and Carla were lovers for eight months before things became difficult. People were beginning to talk, and it could not be long before Robert found out about them. Robert will never give me a divorce, and George and I have no money of our own, Carla thought. But Carla knew that Robert's gold was valuable enough to give her and George a comfortable life. By a strange accident, it was a policeman who gave them the idea for their murder plan. The inspector made a surprise visit to the Grant's house one evening. George was also there. He often came in for a drink. There have been several robberies nearby, and we haven't caught the thief yet. We know who he is, and it won't be long before we catch him, but we're very worried. He carries a gun, and we're almost sure he has killed someone. This house is in a very lonely area. Mr. Torbe is your only neighbor. You also have a lot of valuable gold, the inspector told Robert. What are you trying to say? asked Robert. I'm saying that it's sensible to be careful, very careful. Why not put your gold in the bank until the thief is caught? The inspector said. But I don't want to do that said Robert. The inspector tried to keep his cool and said, Well, I've warned you, sir. Please remember that. The inspector left, and George said, The inspector didn't warn me, because he knows I have nothing worth stealing. But if this gunman does visit me, he will be sorry. I have a gun, and I won't think twice before using it. George was tall and strong, and Carla thought he was very good looking. She did not try to hide her feelings. I feel sorry for the thief who tries to scare you, George, she said. Three nights later, Carla was lying awake in her bed while Robert was asleep. It was six minutes to three. Carla was excited. Just ten minutes before George enters the house, she thought. Those ten minutes felt very long. Then she heard a noise, glass breaking, <coughs> followed by the sound of a window being pushed up. Robert did not wake up. Carla waited until she heard the sound of George climbing through the open window. Then she reached across to Robert's bed. Robert, wake up. There's somebody downstairs. She was shaking him. Robert woke up slowly. What? Someone downstairs? No, I'm sure you're... He sat up in bed, fully awake now. There is someone. I'll have to go down, I suppose. He put on his old white dressing gown and went out of the room. Carla waited in the dark. The wait felt very long, 
but it was less than half a minute. Then a thin line of light appeared under the bedroom door. Carla heard her husband cry out suddenly. Then she heard the sound of a gunshot. Something, or someone, heavy fell to the floor. Then a door slammed open, and she heard running footsteps outside the house. Carla waited. George needs time to escape before I call the police, she thought. She turned on her bedside light and got out of bed. Now that it was all over, she felt strangely calm. She knew what she was going to say to the police. How soon could she marry George? Six months from now, they could go to Mexico for a holiday after they were married. She had always wanted to see Mexico. Then the door opened and Robert walked in. For a long moment, Carla could only look at him, her stomach sick with fear. He looked back at her, silent, pale, and untidy, but alive. What? What happened? She said. He got away. I'm afraid he's taken some of my best gold with him. I wish I had listened to the inspector and sent it to the bank, said Robert. But I heard a gunshot. I thought you, you're not hurt, Robert, said Carla. No, Carla, I'm not hurt, but I have some bad news. It's George. I think the brave man was watching the house and followed the thief in to try and help us. He's at the bottom of the stairs. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do for him, said Robert. Carla fell forward, her eyes closed. Robert caught her. He carried her to the bed, then went downstairs. When he reached the bottom, he had to step over George's body. He did this calmly, stepping around the blood on the carpet. But when he walked into the room where he kept his gold, he felt like crying. All of the best pieces were gone. He closed the door and went into his study. But before he called the police, he carefully cleaned the small gun that was in his dressing gown pocket. Then he locked it inside his desk. He had taken care of the one problem in his otherwise very tidy life and wanted to make sure he would not face any more trouble. As the inspector said, it was sensible to be careful.